and I'm slamming all the doors you've opened. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. Welcome today to the wedding of Robert Larkin and Christina Crown. And who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Amen. All right. You may uh, kiss your uh, friend goodbye. All right. Now you come right over here, brother. This, is, by the way, is Robert's mom. All right, stand right beside each other, and that's good. Robert, do you love this woman? I do. Good, good. Christina, do you love this man? I do. Wonderful, so wonderful. <laughs> Let's pray. This is going to be unusual, but Andy, would you pray for this couple? This is all of a sudden. God, we just thank you so much for this day, uh, for bringing Rob and Christina together. We just uh, pray that uh, there, there's no one other than the Holy Spirit that will be between them from now on. We just pray that you'll continue to bless them through this life, Lord. Uh, keep them safe, keep them strong. We just thank you for bringing them into our fellowship so, so we can uh, encourage them and we just thank you for the blessing they give us today as, as well as we remember uh, with gratitude and thankfulness the, the wives you've given us. Pray that you'll bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. And if we'll come a little closer and turn and face each other. Amen. I'll ask you all to be seated. This is a blessing, what an honor to be here today and uh, be a part of this wedding. And uh, we read in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, 
If we don't have love, we have nothing. But though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, could be the smartest person in the world and have all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not, love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Uh, love beareth all things, believeth all things, opeth all things, endureth all things. No doubt about it, love never fails. Can I get an amen? Uh, how about you all come over this way a little bit? Up oh, too much, too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> One man said the secret to a great marriage was communication, and I agree with that. As a matter of fact, he said they go out to dinner twice a week. Uh, he said uh, soft lights, candles, and a slow walk home. He said she goes on Tuesday, I go on Thursday. <laughs> God said in Genesis chapter 2, when he created everything, he said, imagine this, God said one thing was not good. And the Bible says it is not good for man to live alone. I will make him a helpmate. Helpmate does not mean inferior, but supporter. It's the same word as God is our helper. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There's four things we've prayed for today for this wedding. First of all, that Robert and Christina's marriage would be great. And I will tell you, this is a gifted couple. I'm very serious. I am so touched with this couple. Uh, they, uh, that their troubles would be few. They would have many years together. Uh, and another thought, that those of you that are here that are married would remember your wedding day and your love, your vows that you made, and maybe today you would recommit your lives one to another. If you're single here today, think of your wedding someday and be patient. Can I get an amen? Another thought of prayer, that the Lord Jesus would be glorified here today and always in their lives. By the way, he only can satisfy the longing soul and fill every hungry soul, the Bible tells me, with goodness. Proverbs 18, 22 tells us, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. What a blessing. Amen, Rob? Amen. All right. Now let's talk about Christina first. <laughs> there will never be a dull moment with her. She loves to cook. She loves sports. She loves the Redskins. And she's very funny. <laughs> Proverbs 31 tells me that the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Robert told me her favorite hobbies are cutting the grass and shoveling snow. <laughs> and she has the gift of shopping. And I know that. Since they decided they were going to get married, I've become close friends with FedEx, UPS, <laughs> everybody just bringing in uh, gifts from afar. <laughs> Seriously, these two have so much fun together. They communicate well. 
they lean on each other. They are in love. <laughs> and they're best friends. Now, let's look at Robert. <laughs> Yesterday, I was so touched. His hair was about that long. <laughs> and he was so worried, he said, I gotta go get a haircut. I said, why do you want to get a haircut? He said, because my boss told me. <laughs> I've checked him out, no doubt. He is a Mr. Nice Guy. And Christina, you have my stamp of approval. Thank you. And a hard worker, wow. And also good at sharpening uh, uh, chainsaw blades. <laughs> that was his first job I think I gave him. But uh, he has my approval. He's, he's definitely a hard worker. I asked uh, if uh, he likes to cook, and she said, no, he likes to eat. <laughs> I understand that. Let's talk about marriage for a minute. Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft voice turneth away anger. It's so important in a marriage. Uh, another thought. Uh, really forgive one another. I think this is one of my wife and I, Donna's, uh, greatest blessings. Is, uh, by the way, we will have been married 50 years next month. And she's still with me. <laughs> and um, we didn't get married in church. We got married at the Justice of the Peace. And we both signed a paper. And the woman said, kiss your wife. I said, what wife? <laughs> I just signed a piece of paper. And my wife, my mom, and her mom were there together with us. Uh, and uh, my mother said, kiss your wife, dummy. <laughs> I didn't even know I was married. I'm still not sure we're married. It was that quick. But God has blessed us. And uh, really forgive one another. That was what I started to tell you. Um, I can't think of one thing Donna has ever done wrong. You know why? Because we really forgive each other. And when you forgive, you forget. Uh, can I get an amen? amen? And the Bible also tells us not to let the sun go down on your wrath. If you have a problem, take care of it right away before you go to bed. I like uh, what uh, Matthew Henry said. A godly wife is the crown of her husband. She is his glory. Men's Life magazine surprised itself with a survey. It said, uh, it asked its readers, what's the most important thing in your life? It was not sex, it was not career. It was neither fame or fortune. The most important thing to 63% of the men were their wives. And 90% of married men called their wives their best friend. Matthew Henry said that Eve was made of God, not of Adam's head, to rule over him, not out of his feet to be stamped on by him or trampled on by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected by him, and near his heart to be loved by him. Your wife should be your best friend, and you should dearly love her. Ephesians tells me, uh, uh, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. No greater love than that. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, the Bible says, loveth himself. While shopping, a department store clerk addressed a mother as ma'am. Her four-year-old daughter asked what that meant. And she said, ma'am is short for madam, she replied. It's polite to address a woman. Uh, uh, and she said, well, I like that. And then she said, well, what name should her daddy be called? And the lady said, sir. And she thought a minute and said, that must be short for Servant. <laughs> now let me say this. Solomon was not happy. 
And according to some, he had 750 wives. I'm telling that for my teacher here. And then he had 300 girlfriends. But guess what? He wasn't happy. And uh, some say, you know, if I had the right wife, I'd be happy. Some say, if I had money in the bank, the right wife and money in the bank, I'd be happy. Well, Solomon had, I think, $250 billion in the bank, and guess what? He wasn't happy. And then some say, you know, if I have money in the bank, the right wife, and a good job, I'll be happy. Solomon had the best job going. He could hire and fire anybody he want, never show up for work, give himself a raise every day. Are you all listening to me? And guess what? He wasn't happy. Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanity, all is vanity, which means a life without God is emptiness. People, we need to include God in our lives. Psalm 37, 4 says, I love this verse, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that a blessing? He will give you the desires of your heart. Put him first. He'll put you first. You want an abundant life? Put him first, and he'll give it to you. I'd like to tell you about another marriage at this time that we're all invited to. In Revelation 19.9, it says, And write, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh, if you died today, are you sure of heaven? Jesus is the groom. The church is his bride. John 14.6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. The Bible also tells us about sin, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Without the Lord Jesus, we would die and go to hell. It's a serious thing. The Lord said in Romans 6.23, the way of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life is a free gift. What a blessing. Romans 5, 8 says, And God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us on that cross. We know he was buried. Three days later, he came out of the grave alive, and he is alive forevermore. And the Bible tells me that uh, if we'll turn from our sin and turn to him, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I can testify, these two have asked Jesus to forgive them and save them. And he has given them an amazing life. Uh, can I get one more amen? amen? And if you don't know him yet, you need to get to know him. So if you've never trusted the Lord, I would encourage you, like they did, to get alone and talk to the Lord, get into his word, and, and, and let the Lord change your life. And he will. And um, I think of the verse, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I don't care what you're bound by. I get in the word, and it can set you free. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. Uh, amen. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's not in a church. It's not in a religion. It's not in your good works. It's in Jesus Christ. He's alone is the only way to heaven. And uh, we have a presentation at this time from a Gideon in our church. Bill Heath, come on up, Bill. It's a little unusual, but we're having fun. We are unusual. Uh, Sure, come around this way, so YouTube can, can hear what's going on. All right, as a member of the Gideons, locally here, we give Bibles to people. Okay. But this is a special moment, and may this be a special Bible for you for the rest of your lives. There's a his and hers, so you can tell the difference, whose is whose. 
And uh, Robert, you have a special verse in there for you. And so do you, Christina. And may this keep you together. And Robert is a, the um, husband. You're going to make this flower bloom, your wife. And your wife is going to bloom too. But this is going to make you both work, labor together, love one another as you should. And this is Thank to you, you Christina. Right there on the front row. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's Thank right. You. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you have met the gift table. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Bill. All right. Now let's look at wedding vows. And, and Rob has helped me write these. First, I'd like the audience to make some vows to this couple. First of all, will you pray for this couple when you think of them? Would you say, I will? I will. Uh, Earl, would you say, I'll try? <laughs> when they got married years ago, I said, you know, if you say, I do or I will, he said, I'll try. <laughs> all the vows. And they're still trying. I mean, it's working pretty good. Will you call them and encourage them from time to time? Good. Would you go by and visit them from time to time? And Rob put down here, but not tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. In the book of Ruth, we read a prayer of dedication. Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And there thou, where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. There, uh, and where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. Ruth was no doubt steadfastly minded. And when we make a vow, the Bible says unto the Lord, and if you decide not to pay it, he says, pay it for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. And the Bible also says, uh, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Robert, Christina, will you join your right hands? Robert, do you take Christina to be your true and wedded wife? Do you solemnly promise before God and these witnesses to love her, cherish her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others, cleave unto her and her only all the days of your life? I do. Christina, do you take Robert to be your true and wedded husband? I do. Do you solemnly promise before God and these witnesses to love him, cherish him, honor him, protect him, and forsaking all others, cleave to him and him only all the days of your life? Do you mutually promise in the presence of God and these witnesses that you will at all times and in all circumstances conduct yourselves toward one another as becometh husband and wife? The rings, please. All right. It is a Christian custom to exchange rings as a symbol of love. As the rings have no end, so should your love have no end. As the rings are made of gold symbolizing purity, so should your marriage have purity. As oft as either of you see them, be reminded of this moment, the endless love you promised and your commitment one to another. Robert? as you place this ring on the left hand of your bride, repeat after me. Christina, Christina. I give you this ring, you this ring. As, a as a symbol of our vows. And with all that I am, all that I am. and all that I, have, all that I have, I honor you. I honor you. With this ring, I thee wed. Amen. Christina, as you place this rock 
We've been joking all night, <laughs> forgive me. On the left hand of your husband, I want you to repeat after me. Robert, I give you this ring. Robert, I give you this ring. <laughs> all that I, wait a minute. As a symbol of our vows, with, of our vows. with all, that I am, all that I am, all that I have, I honor you. With this ring, I thee wed. Robert and Christina, for as much as you have consented together in holy matrimony and have witnessed the same before God in this company and have pledged your love and loyalty to each other and have declared the same by the joining of hands and the giving of rings, I therefore, by the authority of this state, pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. I believe at this time, you're going to sing us a song. Uh, I am, yes. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> You're not married yet. <laughs> no making out in church. <laughs> Sounds like my phone. I, I tell you what, Marissa, let's do this. Let me go ahead and finish the vows, and then we'll have her come up right as we got ready to get ready to eat. That's all right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the moment we've all waited for, Robert, you may kiss your precious bride. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, may I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Robert Larkin. I believe maybe at this time we'll have you all go to the back and, and shake hands and uh, not you shaking hands with each other. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're ready. Yep. Marissa is going to sing a song, and I believe you two are going to do the first dance with this yes. song, aren't you? I don't sing, by the way. <laughs> this is only for my mom <laughs> and Rob. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Can you? Kind of? It's rigged.
When the rain is blowing in your face And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love Ooh. I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I would never do you wrong I know it from the moment that we met No doubt in my mind where you belong oh, I'm sorry I messed up <laughs> I'd go crawling down the avenue No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do To make you feel my love Storms are raging on the rolling sea And on the highway of regret The winds of change and blowing wild and free You ain't seen nothing like me yet I could make you happy, make your dreams come true. No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do. Go to the edge of the earth for you to make you feel my love. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you, Marissa. And like one more time, for the first time, husband and wife. Yes. <laughs> Would you all like to stand at the back and just greet people? And, uh, okay. and then I think at this time we're going to go off of YouTube. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I do want to say one word, one word. Yeah. Uh, I know her mama. I know her daddy. Our dad's been in heaven for a long time. He loved the Lord. I know he's looking down today and so proud. So proud of you. And your mom is watching from Florida. And my girls. <laughs> and, his, and her girls. Amen. Uh, praise God. All right. Let's give him a big hand. Amen. Let's stand.